Out of the Orchard, Fun with Apple Prince, presented by the Hammond Harwood House. The garden at the Hammond Harwood House was originally made up of four city lots. It was described in a 1789 deed as Hammond Square. Matthias Hammond had purchased the four lots between 1772 and 1774 with the intention of building the property. It was bounded by King George Street, Prince George Street, and the boundary of the Paca property. Where the house is situated was probably the only unobstructed view of the harbor. The four acres from the house down to the Paca Gardens was originally a gentle slope. We believe it was then filled in to have series of terraces or falls. Similar falls can still be seen at the Paca Gardens today, which is a recreated garden of what originally existed on the property. Visitors coming to Annapolis just before the American Revolution described a brick mansion that dominated the townscape as being set in a spacious lawn that featured trees and shrubs. No formal pattern was noted. It is therefore apparent that the English style of a more naturalistic garden had taken hold in Annapolis. The lots closer to Prince George Street, we believe, had some outbuildings, a pasture, and an orchard. Hammond never lived on the property, nor did his nephews, who inherited the property. The first documented family to live here was the Pinckneys and then the Lockermans, and then their daughter Hester, who married William Harwood. The panorama view from the upstairs window must have been quite pleasing to look down and see the heart boxwood, and then beyond that the gentle sloping falls, the orchard to the right, and finally the Severn River with ships docked from all over the eastern seaboard. It must have been quite a sight in the early 18th and 19th century, bright with possibility. It was in October of 1811 that the Lockerman family, which consisted of Francis, Richard, and three small children, Townley, Hester, and Richard Jr., moved into the house. That same year, 1811, David Bailey Warden, an American diplomat to Paris and author, wrote in his journal of a voyage about Annapolis. I am pleased with this city. It is beautifully situated on the banks of the Severn, on a point of land which is almost surrounded with water. The town has a romantic appearance. The houses are thinly scattered over a considerable extent of surface, and intervening gardens and lawns give it a very rural aspect. The people are gay and social, free from the anxiety and cares of commercial operations. A condition of life which no doubt is favorable to health and long life. They go to bed early and rise with the sun, and prefer early walks, picturesque scenery, and the productions of nature, to night parties, to cards, and artificial light. During the session of the assembly in winter, the town is said to be very attractive. The young ladies, many of whom are beautiful and accomplished, vie with each other in their attention to strangers. The Lockermans likely used their extensive grounds as a pleasure garden, similar to those seen in Regency England, like Jane Austen's novels for walks, outdoor picnics, and space for their children to play. It is probable that raspberries grew on the property for Francis Lockerman's beloved dessert, the Raspberry Fool, from the British tradition. In 1825, Francis planted the boxwoods in the shape of a heart. Only the top remains. On the property, Hammond would have had some type of outbuilding to house carriages and horses. Although Hammond never lived here, it is feasible to think that perhaps some early building existed for that purpose. He was a big fan of horse racing, Annapolis had a track near the State House, and our two first presidents even partook in attending those festivities. Later occupants of the home, including the Lockerman family and the Harwoods, would have also had a stable-like structure to house horses and carriages. Late 19th century images show a small wood building that could have been the stable in back of the North Hyphen facing King George Street. A spring house is a small building, usually of a single room, constructed over a spring. It is thought Hammond Harwood House had a center in the property. There is a spring that bisects the property under the ground and comes up in the Paca Gardens. While the original purpose of a spring house was to keep the spring water clean by excluding fallen leaves, animals, etc., the enclosing structure was also used for refrigeration. 
before the advent of ice delivery and later electric refrigeration. The water of the spring maintains a constant cool temperature inside the spring house throughout the year. Food that would otherwise spoil, such as meat, fruit, or dairy products, could be kept there safe from animal damage as well. It is thought the vegetable garden stood where 211 and 213 King George Street now stand. The garden would have had crops that could be used in the kitchen. The orchard stood where Cumberland Court is now, and that is what we will talk about today. To grow their own food because there weren't supermarkets then. But in Annapolis, they did have markets because this is on, on a port. So the people would come in in the boats and they'd bring in various food things. You could fish and get crabs and um, um, uh, oysters. Okay. So wealthy people had it pretty good living here because they could go to a market and get fresh items that they didn't have on their own. We have an herb garden over there. So they also grew their own herbs to spice up their food. Now, it's important also to understand that there was no refrigeration. They didn't have refrigerators. So what they had to do was heavily salt. Maybe they, they uh, uh, boiled food ahead of time. Um, they had to eat it right away because you couldn't keep it. So there was no microwaving, no leftover pizza, nothing like that like we have today. Okay. So we're going to take one of those um, products of the orchard. We're going to work with apples today. We're going to make apple prints. Okay, are you ready to go? All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your paintbrush. And there's a paintbrush for each color. Here, you can, Rosie, you need two. And you're going to take your apple and you're going to paint the one side of the apple and you're going to turn it over and print it. So go ahead and get started. start by making a pumpkin patch. And Rosie is going to start by making her apple orchard. Okay, Rosie, go for it. That one better. I did. You might be able to get another print out of that, too. That would be given an interesting texture. Go ahead and put it up there and see if you want to print with it again. I have the details. That's great. 